So you've been self-hosting a lot of services at home. You've built up your home lab and now you have lots of applications running within your servers. And the way you've accessed them is on your local network or through VPN. And up until now, you haven't been able to reach them outside of your own home network. Well, that's about to change. Hey, welcome back. So I'm Techno Tim, and today we're gonna to talk about exposing your services securely using a reverse proxy. As a quick reminder, I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, so if you want to continue the conversation about exposing some services there, we can. So let's talk about setting up a reverse proxy. So what is a reverse proxy? A reverse proxy in simple terms is just a server that sits in front of web servers that forwards clients traffic to the web servers. They can be used in many different ways. You can set it up with SSL, and you have a lot of options out there. And if you're running Kubernetes at home, it's been challenging to try to expose services through a reverse proxy. And it's even more challenging routing all of that traffic to your microservices. And then to top it all off, you need SSL certificates. This is where we can get a little help from open source. So how does it all come together? Well, I'm gonna show you. So today in this video, we're gonna set up MetalLB traffic in Let's Encrypt so that you can expose your Kubernetes clusters securely. Now I've set up Kubernetes using something called Rancher. Now, if you're not familiar with Rancher, Rancher is an easy way to spin up and get Kubernetes at home. If you need help setting this up, I've got a step-by-step -step tutorial that'll walk you through setting up Rancher, Kubernetes, and Docker all within a couple of minutes. And once you got that set up, you're ready to start this tutorial. So with that out of the way, let's get started. So first, you'll want to make sure your Rancher server is up and running. It's a good idea to back up your Rancher server before we do any of this. This is going to be a pretty complex tutorial, so be sure to follow it step by step. And it's a good idea to back it up just in case something goes wrong. The next thing you'll need to do is port forward HTTP and HTTPS to your Rancher server. This is because a reverse proxy and our load balancer is gonna handle this traffic. Next, you'll wanna create a couple of DNS entries. These will be DNS entries into whatever DNS system you're using. You'll wanna add one for traffic.example.com and one for the domain you plan on hosting. This is just so we can reach it internally while we're testing. Next, you'll wanna reserve a block of IPs. This will make sense later, but just be sure we have a block of IPs that aren't getting handed out by your own DHCP server. Next, we'll wanna set up kube control. Now, some people say kube control and some people say kube cuddle, but I usually say kube control. I'm not really sure how it's pronounced. But anyway, you can set up kube control by looking at the Kubernetes documentation. If you're on a Linux-like system, this is as simple as running a curl command. If you're on Windows, I highly recommend setting up WSL on your Windows machine. This will give you a Linux-like experience on your Windows machine, and you'll be able to copy and paste a lot of this documentation. If you need help setting this up, I've got a guide on setting up your Windows machine for JavaScript development. Now I know we're not doing JavaScript development here, but it walks you through setting up your machine with WSL, and then you can ignore the JavaScript stuff at the end, or you can do JavaScript. Once you have it installed, you should be able to run this kube control version dash dash client and see it pipe out your version. If not, you'll want to get that set up. So our kube config allows us to connect securely to Kubernetes to manage it. Now we'll do most administration and management within the UI, but we'll need it for a small piece. So to get your kube config, you'll go into your cluster, click cluster, and then we'll click kube config file. We need to copy this config to our local machine. So let's copy that to clipboard. Then we'll paste that in a config file within .kube under your profile. And then to test to see if it's working, you can run a command like kube control get namespaces. This should return with some namespaces. Okay, so now we're ready to install metal LB. So why do we need metal LB? That's a great question. And I didn't know the answer to this question a couple of days ago. So Kubernetes clusters are meant to be connected to a load balancer. So if you try going to your Kubernetes cluster, you may have noticed that you either get an error or that you get a self-signed certificate. This is the Kubernetes ingress controller responding to you. So Kubernetes installs are always looking for a load balancer and MetalLB spins up a load balancer for you so that Kubernetes cluster can communicate with the outside world. So it's really easy to set up and here's how you do it. So we'll run this first command to configure the MetalLB namespace. Then we'll run this next command to deploy MetalLB. Then we'll run this last command to create a MetalLB secret. Then we should be able to run kube control get namespaces and we should see our MetalLB namespace there. We can also verify that too within the Rancher UI. If we go to cluster, our default cluster, and go to namespaces, we should see MetalLB here. Next, we'll want to create a config.yaml. So this is the config that's going to be applied to our MetalLB. Here's an example one that I'm using that works really well. 
So the interesting part is down here under addresses. So remember how I said to set aside some IP addresses within your subnet? Well, here's why. So I've set aside a small block. The way that I've been using MetalLB so far is that I only need a couple, but you'll want to change this according to your subnet. This is the network that Rancher lives on. And then once you've saved that YAML file, you want to apply it. So we'll run kube control apply dash f config.yaml. So we've done all that and we don't see anything yet. That's okay. Once we set up traffic, you'll see how this works. So the way that we're going to set up traffic is going into our cluster and we're actually going to go into the system namespace. Now, typically you wouldn't install anything here, but traffic needs to be installed here. So let's click on system. And once we get here, we'll click on apps. Now, there isn't anything here. Well, that's because we're going to deploy them. So let's click launch. So now you'll see a bunch of apps here. So these are pre-configured apps that you can install. A reminder, don't install them in the system namespace unless they tell you to. But in here, we can find traffic. Once we click on traffic, let's fill out this form. So the name can be traffic, the namespace. This is really important. So let's choose use existing namespace. Then we'll want to choose the kube system namespace. We'll keep the service type, the load for balancer, use default image is fine. We can keep debugging to false. SSL, we'll set this to true. Now we won't change HTTP and HTTPS yet. Permanent redirects, we'll keep to false for now. And let's encrypt, let's turn on. Set this to true. Email, let's enter our email. Keep on host to true, logging to true. We're gonna change the challenge type. We're gonna change this to DNS01. Persistence is true. And enable, we're gonna keep to true. And enable dashboard, we're gonna set this to true. And here, we're gonna set a name for our traffic dashboard. Now you can set the domain to anything you want, but I set this to traffic.example.com. Basic auth, this is where you would set basic auth. You'll need a HT generator to do this, and this is where you would enter it. Now, before we hit launch, we're gonna change a couple of things. So let's go up here to edit as YAML. And here, we're gonna add a couple of fields. So under Acme, we're gonna add a couple of properties. We're gonna add DNS provider, then the name of my DNS provider, as well as existing secret name. Now, we'll set up the secret in a second, but going back to the DNS provider. Traffic supports lots of DNS providers, and we'll actually need to get an API key from our DNS provider so that we can verify our domain. I found that this is the simplest and most reliable way to get certificates. You'll want to check the traffic documentation for all the supported DNS providers. But I use Cloudflare, and this is how you do it. And while you're there, you'll probably want to set up your DNS record. Now I'm going to be standing up one of my website, it's technotim.live, and I have a DNS record pointing back to my IP address. And then I have a DNS record internally pointing at my rancher cluster. You'll want to be sure that this is set up before proceeding. So after clicking launch, traffic is here, but it's not quite ready yet. We need to set up one more thing. So now we need to set our secrets for our Cloudflare config. You can do this by going to cluster and go to system. Make sure that you go to system because this is where traffic is running. And then we'll go into resources and secrets and you want to create a new secret. So I called mine Cloudflare DNS and for secret values, it's a key value pair. The first one is Cloudflare API key and then your API key from Cloudflare. And the next one is Cloudflare email and that's going to be the email address you use to register with Cloudflare. And if you're using a different DNS provider, you'll have different values here. You can check traffic's home repo for the supported values. And if you don't see it there, you'll see it in the logs if you try to start traffic without these values. And take note of the name of this secret because you'll use this in your traffic configuration. Mine's Cloudflare-DNS. So we need to set up a persistent volume claim for this. This is so it can store the certificates for us. So we do that by going back to our cluster and then click on storage and go to persistent volumes. Here, you wanna add volume and you'll wanna name it. So here, I'm just gonna name this custom and for a volume plugin, let's just store it on this host. So let's choose host path. Then you'll wanna specify a path where we're gonna store these certificates. This is the path on the server and it can be anywhere as long as Rancher can reach it. Under customize, we're not gonna change anything here. And then we'll save. And then this should create a persistent volume. And if we go back to cluster system and go to apps and we go into traffic, we should see that traffic spinning up. So a couple of things to call out here. First, under volumes, you wanna make sure that your claim is working. This should say bound here. If this doesn't say bound, that means your claim's not set up properly. So you wanna get that working. Next, you'll wanna be sure that you see some endpoints here. Now, if you don't see any endpoints here, that means that MetalLB isn't doing what it's supposed to be doing. And you'll need to troubleshoot that. 
but you'll notice that one of the IPs is one of the IPs in the range that I set up for Meta LB. So this means it's working. And traffic.example.com, this is our traffic dashboard. If you set up that DNS record locally, it should be working. So if we open it up, here's our traffic dashboard. So this doesn't look too interesting now, but it'll get there. Okay, so if you see these endpoints here, this would be a good time to switch your port forwarding. So previously you had port forwarding going to your rancher server. Now you wanna switch the port forwarding for HTTP and HTTPS to the Metal LB IP address, which is right here. So mine's 192.168.3.201. And on my firewall and my NAT rule, I forward HTTP and HTTPS. So you wanna set that up. So now we'll need to deploy our Kubernetes workload. For me, this is gonna be my simple website. So here I'm gonna to go to the cluster default and I'm gonna click launch and then make sure I'm on workloads. Here we're gonna click deploy. Here I'm gonna name my workload. So it's Techno Tim Live. Then I'm gonna set my Docker image. This is a custom one for me because it's a custom one I built. And this is again, part of the reason why I like using Kubernetes at home. This allows me to deploy workloads at home, just like I do in the public cloud. And if you'd like to see a tutorial on how to build custom Docker images and store them in a registry and then deploy them to Kubernetes at home, let me know in the comments section below. But anyways, I'm not gonna set any port mapping here. I'm just gonna click launch. So now my workload is running, but it's not exposed. So the way you typically do this is by a load balancer. And when you create a load balancer, that creates an ingress that exposes this service inside of the cluster. And if you've done this before, you'll notice that you can then get to that service, but you don't have SSL. Well, actually you do have SSL, but it's the Kubernetes self-signed one, not the one we're getting from Let's Encrypt. But anyways, I'll show you how it's done. So I'm also gonna open traffic in this other window so you can see what traffic's doing. This is where it gets cool. So if I go to add ingress, let's name our website. So it's Techno Tim Live. Now this is the DNS name or the host name that we wanna to route to. So I'm gonna put in technotim.live, that's my domain. And then for choose workload, I'm gonna choose this workload we just created, which is technotim-live. And then the port is 80. So my workload exposes port 80 within the Docker container. Now we won't add any certificates or add any annotations. And make sure this is the default namespace too. And we'll click save. Now, as soon as we save that, we see traffic spinning up a backend pointing to a front end. And it says we have HTTP and HTTPS. And my ingress is still initializing, but let's go take a look at traffic. So if we go back into system and then apps, let's go into traffic and let's actually look at this traffic workload. And then we'll go over here and go to logs. And if we look in the logs, we can see that traffic is actually doing stuff. So the Acme part of traffic, which is the Let's Encrypt client, is actually going out and validating my DNS. So we can see here an info message, the server validated our DNS, validation succeeded, and it responded with a certificate, which means we have a staging certificate. And so if we go to our domain, so mine's HTTPS technotim.live, we should see a certificate error. And this is to be expected. That's because we requested a staging certificate from Let's Encrypt. So let's take a look at this certificate. Put advanced, view certificate, and we can see right here, fake LE intermediate X1. And if we scroll down the qualifier and the value, HTTP CPS Let's Encrypt.org. So this is a good sign. We're getting a staging certificate from Let's Encrypt. Eventually we want a production certificate. So I highly recommend setting up all your workloads and validating that you get a staging certificate before moving to production. The production API has rate limiting enabled. And if you exceed the amount of errors within a certain time period, you'll get blocked. So I highly recommend setting up staging certificates before moving to production and verifying they all work. But once you're ready, let's get a production certificate. So we'll need to do two things. First, we'll go back into traffic. So that's cluster, system, and then traffic. And once we're in here, let's scale him down to zero. Scale down to zero. So he should remove his pods. And if we go into traffic and check, shouldn't be any pods here. Okay, so he's good and he's shut down. We're gonna to have to go into the persistent volume that we created. In here, you'll find an acme.json file. You'll wanna remove this file. This contains your certificates. So I've had to do a sudo rm acme.json. And once that's gone, verify it's gone, and it's gone. Then we'll go back into traffic and we'll upgrade this workload. Here in the YAML, we'll wanna change staging to false. 
Once you set it to false, let's hit upgrade. Then we'll go back into traffic. And now we'll need to scale him up. Scale him up to one. Let's go into this pod. Okay, so this pod's running. Let's look in our logs. Okay, and we can see that validations have succeeded. So that means we have a production certificate. Let's go check. And now we can see our website loads. Let's check the certificate. Connection secure, verified by Let's Encrypt. More information, and we can see our certificate. So congratulations. We've exposed our Kubernetes cluster externally using MetaLLB. We set up a reverse proxy with traffic. We enabled Let's Encrypt to get certificates for us. And now we can access our website securely anywhere in the world. And this is all automated. Now, I know that this tutorial is a little complex, but Kubernetes is complex. I've tried to make this as simple as possible, and that's why I choose Rancher to help spin up Kubernetes. And hopefully you're learning a lot along the way. So what do you think about exposing your Kubernetes cluster externally? What do you think about MetaLLB, traffic, or Let's Encrypt? Did you have any problems along the way? If so, let me know in the comments section below. And while you're in the comments, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have more questions, you can always join my live stream. I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, so if you have a question about this video or any of my other videos, hop in my stream and I'd love to have you. So, thanks so much for watching and till next time, stream on my friends. What will your next video be about? Ah, uh, it's, uh, it's coming. I gave lots of hints. I already gave lots of hints in this while I've been talking and uh, I gave hints on the first video. I, I usually don't tell. Not that it's a huge surprise, but uh, you'll have to see and it'll be coming soon. <laughs> I need to finish editing it uh, or it will not get out Saturday morning. Saturday morning is my is my release day. That's uh, I release every Saturday morning. It's like Saturday morning cartoons back in the day, except for their mediocre tech videos by me. <laughs>